Hey, hey, hey! Welcome back to Melinda's Messy Sink. Today's video is a what's for dinner video. I have six easy dinner ideas for you. I had a procedure done on my foot, so some of these are super easy because I was hobbling around, um, but we're doing the eat at home challenge, so I was coming up with all kinds of creative ways to make super easy dinners and still be able to keep my foot propped up. So I hope you enjoy these six dinner ideas as for inspiration to cook at home for your family. Let's get started. Hey guys, tonight for dinner, we are having firecracker chicken. This is a new recipe for us, and so I'm excited to give it a try. We are gonna start with the um, sauce first. We are gonna take chili sauce, soy sauce, apple cider vinegar, garlic, and brown sugar. We're gonna heat this sauce until all of the sugar is dissolved. We are not making ours quite as hot as the recipe calls for. The recipe wants you to add red pepper flakes as well, and I'm gonna leave those out. Since this is the first time I've made it, um, I don't wanna make it too hot that we can't eat it, um, but I'll know next time if I need to add some uh, the pepper flakes to make it more spicy. I found this recipe on Pinterest. I'll be sure to link it below. In this pan over here, I'm bringing water up to a boil to make some white rice. My sauce has come up to a boil and I've taken it off the heat. All we needed to do was for the sugar to dissolve. My water for my rice is boiling, so I'm gonna add my rice, give that a good stir, turn off the heat, put a lid on and let it do its thing. We are, I have some chicken breast and what you're going to do is you're going to salt and pepper your chicken. I'm going to let my pan get hot and then I'm gonna add just a little bit of oil and we're gonna brown off our chicken. I have my oven preheating on 400 degrees as well. My husband is cutting up some green onions for us. I've got my pan hot, so I'm just gonna put just a little bit of oil in. I'm gonna get my chicken in my pan to get it browned up. We're gonna cook this chicken about three minutes on each side. All right, what we're gonna do is we are going to turn our heat off. We're going to baste our chicken. And we're gonna transfer this to a, our preheated oven at 400 degrees. This is going to cook for about 15, 10, 15 minutes, depending on the size of your chicken. And you're gonna baste it every five minutes. All right, our chicken's going in for the first base, for the first five minutes. All right, our first five minutes is done. I'm going to baste this side again. Okay guys, sorry, my battery died. All right, so it went back in for the second five minutes. I'm gonna baste it again, and whenever it comes out, after five more minutes, then it's ready to go. All right. This chicken just came out of the oven for the, the third round of five minutes. It is done. The sauce will thicken up as it begins to cool. So we're gonna let it rest for a few minutes and then we're gonna get dinner plated up. And here is dinner at our house tonight. Firecracker chicken, white rice, and green onions. Hey guys, tonight for dinner we are having copycat Ro Arby's roast beef sandwiches. So the first thing I wanted to do was to make the Arby sauce. My husband loves that. I found this recipe on Pinterest and I'm going to um, put it in the description box below. We're just gonna start out with some ketchup, salt, onion powder, garlic powder, brown sugar, apple cider vinegar, 
and we're going to use um, a couple of dabs of hot sauce. It says to add four to five drops of hot sauce. I'm going to add two and start there. Well, three. <laughs> All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this on and we're going to let it cook down. Um, we are going to want to keep on stirring it. It's going to cook about 20 minutes and it says to continually stir it after the 10 minute mark. I do have some water here that we're going to add to thin it out to keep it the RB sauce consistency. So I'm going to go ahead and get my eye turned on and um, I'll be back when this starts cooking. Uh, so, okay, so our ketchup has started coming up to a boil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with four tablespoons of water. I'm going to get that mixed in. And then once this comes back up to a boil, we're going to set the timer for 20 minutes. All right, while our Arby sauce is cooking, I bought some Arby's seasoned curly fries. I have my oven preheating. I'm just going to put these in our, um, in our regular oven, not our air fryer. Also, we're going to go ahead and butter our... Um, buns so that we can get them toasted. All right, I'm getting my um, curly fries spread out on my cookie sheet. Slight change of plans here. I just read the directions again and it said that I need to turn these um, halfway through. So I'm gonna put them in a pan with some kind of lip because I can see me um, losing all those all over my stove. <laughs> All right, now I feel a lot safer um, about being able to turn these. All right, these are gonna go into a 425 degree preheated oven for 20 to 25 minutes, depending on however your doneness preference is. And you're going to turn them halfway through. My husband loves these curly fries, so I'm filling up all the little holes. <laughs> all right, we're gonna get these in the oven. All right, I'm continuing to keep an eye on my Arby sauce. It's got about four and a half minutes left to go. I'm gonna start working on my roast beef. All I did was buy a Kroger's um, from the deli. I bought Kroger's roast beef. All I'm gonna do to this is just kind of bring it out and let it start coming up to room temperature so that uh, whenever we have to warm it up later, it won't take as long. Um, but all I'm doing is just opening it up and letting it get to room temperature. All right, Arby sauce is all done. I'm gonna take this off the heat. I'm bringing it up a little closer. To give you an idea of consistency. I'm gonna take this off the heat and I'm gonna set it to the side. I'm gonna let it cool down. And then the recipe says that it can go into a, a refrigerator safe container with the lid and be okay for one to two weeks. We're gonna use most of this today, but then I'll store whatever's left. All right, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna toast our buns. I've got my heat on about medium and um, we buttered them earlier. So all we're gonna do is just put them butter side down and get them toasted up. The last thing that we have to do before our curly fries are done is we have to heat up our roast beef. I turned my heat down in the same pan that I roasted my buns. I turned it down pretty low. And what I did was I took that um, Kroger's roast beef that I showed you earlier and all I did was just kind of break it up in pieces. And then I'm going to just kind of get it in here. Looks good, I'm gonna get this off the heat. And this is copycat Arby's roast beef and curly fries at our house tonight. Hey guys, tonight for dinner, we are gonna try another one of these Frontier soup packets. So what we're doing is we're bringing up a whole container of chicken broth plus one cup to a boil. That's where we're starting. I also have my oven preheating for um, some crescent doughs. 
I mean, crescent doughs, some crescent rolls. Um, so my heat, oven's preheating to 375. All right, our, bro our uh, broth is up to a boil. I'm gonna go ahead and add in two cups of broccoli. Maybe even a little bit more because you really like broccoli. And then I'm going to add the contents of our soup packet. We're gonna let this come back up to a simmer. We're gonna put a lid on it and we're going to let it cook for 30 minutes. All right guys, our 30 minute cook time is up and I have added one cup of heavy cream. Going to let it continue to cook uncovered for 10 more minutes. I'm gonna go grab the cheese, get it um, put in as well. All right, so our croissants just came out of the oven and our soup is finished cooking. I'm gonna get this plated up and I'll meet you over on my counter. Can you guys see all those good veggies in there? And here is dinner at my house tonight. Broccoli cheddar soup and croissant rolls. Hey guys, another quick and easy dinner for tonight. Um, I know I told you the other day that I had um, a little procedure done on my foot. Well, today that thing is killing me. So hopefully today's the worst day and then it gets better. So tonight we are just gonna do some um, Coney dogs. I found this Ray's brand Coney hot dog sauce um, at Walmart. And then I'm just using some Ballpark Franks. I'm gonna get these warmed up. All right, tonight for our smorgasbord, so to speak, we're gonna try to use up some stuff that we have in our cabinet. We've got some sour cream and onion potato chips that are almost gone. We've got some Frito honey um, barbecue twists. Some of these flat pretzels. I'm gonna try to get rid of those. My husband has cut up onion for his hot dog. We have some Velveeta cheese down here that we're going to use. We're gonna, end, we're gonna use the rest of our potato salad and macaroni salad, hot dog buns, and some regular Heinz yellow mustard. All right guys, our hot dogs have come up to a boil. We're gonna let them cook to make sure that they're heated throughout and then our um, coney sauce is warmed up as well. It's time to get things plated up. Here's my husband's plate for tonight. Chili cheese stock with onions, potato salad, and sour cream and onion potato chips. We are on paper plates tonight, so we pitch everything and have the minimum amount of dishes. Hey guys, tonight for dinner, we are gonna have some of these Encore um, Salisbury steaks. I had a small procedure done today and uh, my foot's all still numbed up. So I thought, you know what, I'm gonna throw something in the microwave um, really quick um, that I can get on the table before my foot wakes up. <laughs> We're gonna have um, some uh, kernel corn and then I'm also gonna make some homemade mashed potatoes. So I'm gonna get those potatoes peeled, um, get this ready to go into the microwave and um, I'll be back. All right, I have opened and drained my kernel corn. I've placed a little bit of butter in the bottom of the saucepan. And I'm gonna season this corn up with just some regular Lowry's. And, oops, and some black pepper. All right, I've got my potatoes peeled and washed and I'm just gonna give them a quick chop. My husband um, said that he would stop and get us something to eat on the way home and I'm like, no, 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 we're doing the eat at home challenge, don't forget. And he's like, oh yeah, that's right. So um, I had these potatoes that I needed to use up because they were trying to go bad on me. So I was like, this is a perfect way for me to get a bunch of these um, used up is to make some mashed potatoes. So I'm gonna continue to chop these and get them boiling um, on the stove. Okay guys, our potatoes have finished um, uh, boiling. I've added a stick of butter and I'm gonna add some pepper. Some salt. 
and oats and milk. I usually start small on the milk and then add more if need to. Then I'm gonna use my hand mixer today. All right, our microwave just went off. Our Salisbury steaks are done, our corn is done, and we're getting ready to get this plated up. And here is a quick dinner tonight for us. Mashed potatoes, Salisbury steak, white bread, corn, and my husband diced, uh, quartered him up an onion. Hey guys, for dinner tonight, we are going to be having salad, baked potatoes, and um, shrimp. So I'm going, uh, my oven is preheating, and I'm gonna get my baked potatoes in the oven first because they take the longest. All right, I had a bunch of frozen shrimp in um, this resealable storage bag. I cut, I got these from Sam's, and I cut the directions off on how to make them. So I went ahead and have them in a single file, um, line, a single layer on my cookie sheet for my air fryer. So when the time um, comes up, I'll preheat my air fryer and get my shrimp in. All right, guys, while um, my uh, baked potatoes were baking and now the shrimp is in the air fryer, I cut us up a salad. I still need to get the cheese out. We are going to use this honey French dressing. We love this stuff by Marzetti's. Our baked potatoes are done here. Um, got some croutons and my husband loves green onions in his salad, so got some of that. And so our salad's almost done. Potatoes are done. Just waiting on the shrimp and then we'll get it plated up. All right, one thing I almost forgot to make, and that is cocktail sauce. My husband um, only likes the homemade kind of cocktail sauce. I just have some Heinz ketchup, and I don't measure this, I just kind of eyeball it. Um, that's probably about a half a cup. Just have some Worcestershire sauce. I'm gonna give it a few dashes. And then here is the part that's kind of tr tr your, what your preference is. This is prepared horseradish. And I'm just gonna get that open. <laughs> um, you need to put in whatever amount is gonna work for you because this is where your bite comes from. I like to put about that much in this big of a bowl. I would start out small and work your way up um, instead of getting it too hot right off the bat. And then you just um, incorporate it well. And here is dinner at our house this evening. Shrimps, homemade cocktail sauce, baked potatoes, and salad. And that's a wrap on this week's What's For Dinner video. Thank you so much for following along and I hope that you liked this content. If so, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and like, and leave me a comment on what your favorite meal of the week was. Don't forget, Jesus loves you. I'll see you in the next one.